G'day guys, Jesse here from True Footy. Uh, welcome back to the channel. As you can see today, we're doing kind of a different style video stylistically. Um, gonna give you guys a screen recording um, with my voiceover. To be honest, this is the first time I've made a video like this, so I'm really hoping there's no technical glitches. It seems fairly simple so far. Lots of other YouTubers do videos like this, but um, I'm just having a crack. Um, but the, the premise of this video basically is that We've had a few people in the comments asking to see what our fantasy team looks like um, in addition to the podcast that we did. So I thought I'd humor you guys and I'd actually show you on the screen um, exactly what my team looks like. Uh, now, as you can see, we do have a True Footy Official League. If you're not part of it already, you're more than welcome to join with this invite code. Um, I'm actually going to leave that in the description as well if anyone's interested. Unfortunately, don't play Supercoach. So... Um, if you're looking for a super coach league, we don't have one, maybe in the future, but just I, I don't play it and I don't really don't really have the time to add another thing that I'm going to get obsessed with. So, um, yeah, just for now, we, we've got an AFL fantasy league, but uh, I'm, I'm sure this is probably not the best move for me strategically, showing you guys what my team looks like because I think there's like 71 people in the league now. Let's have a look uh, about league. Manage teams. There we go. So you, you can see there's quite a few people in this league. Lots of Eagles supporters. Um, I didn't do that deliberately. I am an Eagles fan, but it looks like a lot of Eagles boys have joined on. All ladies. Um, which is great, but you do not have to be an Eagles fan to join. By all means, everyone get around it if you're interested in having um, a fun league going. Um, yeah. So guys, what I'm thinking I might do is just sort of go through my players line by line and give you my reasonings. I do also have to start with the premise, I am not an absolute gun at AFL Fantasy, all right? I'm actually, I, last year was the first year doing it. Um, I've always liked footy, obviously, but just AFL Fantasy really never really interested me. So um, I'm not an expert, but I thought I'd just sort of get a bit of discussion going because it, it, it's fun. It's, it's a really fun game. Let's, let's call it for what it is. Um, so yeah, look guys, I'll, I'll just start with my defence um, As you can see, first up we've got Rory Laird I feel like he kind of picks himself to some extent He's such a gun um, Just a real consistent defender who, uh, you know, just gets that many touches So, um, he's, yeah, I think him, him and Lloyd were the first two I picked Just because, you know, you've got to start with a few premium players um, Just to get those, those initial points on the board Next up we have Zach Williams Um I think he, what was it, an Achilles he did last year and missed, or what was, what was his name? I think it was his Achilles. Um, missed most of the season, came back in their last game, and I think he turned up, scored the 100 points. So I think at 421K, he's a really good mid-priced option. There's not a whole heap of amazing mid-priced options. Usually when someone's mid-priced, it's because they're, you know, consistently scoring in the 60s or 70s or whatever. But uh, I feel like Williams... His price represents good value there. I think he'll score more than that. I'm just aware. I'm getting so many notifications here. Just ignore that. It's a group chat. Hopefully, they don't say anything embarrassing. Um, all right, next up, we got Dersma, Port Adelaide defender midfielder. Uh, something like pick 18 last year's draft. Really talented player. And he's already been announced as debuting. And I feel like when you're picking your sort of cheaper rookie options, um, you just got to favor the, the guys who are probably going to play straight away just because they, they give you that, you know, that cash sort of appreciation over time. So at 236K, I think that's good because I think he scored 92 in JLT1 or 2. He scored 46 and 92 any, either way. Confirmed debutant, first round draft pick, so they're probably going to persist with him. I feel like that is a, a bit of a no-brainer, that one. And same, same deal with Jordan Clark here, 242K, really impressive JLT. Um, you know, even from non-fantasy perspective, just... Played really well. I feel like he's going to play all year for Geelong and surely, you know, he'll appreciate from that 242k figure. Uh, and my last defender is Marty Hoare. Um, might have to censor that name out because it's quite rude, but uh, 170k. I've picked him because I'm pretty confident he's going to play. I mean, I don't really know for sure, but um, he did have a fairly solid JLT. Uh, 44 and 53 he scored, which, is, which isn't great, but he's a mature age player. I feel like they're going to probably play him early. And at 170K, um, you know, that's, that's just free money. Um, and I feel like, you know, your emergency is almost the most interesting players to pick, really. Um, 
you know, everyone knows who the premium players are, but the, the emergencies and rookies are, are the ones that really interest me. You've got Christopher Burgess here as my first defenders of emergency. Um, what did he score? 61 and 33 in JLT. Nothing to write home about, but um, key position player, so he's never going to score that much. But at 170k, he's going to appreciate, and he's got a firm debutant for round one. So ticks all those boxes for an emergency. Jack Scrimshaw, uh, 56 and 75 he scored in JLT, a former high draft pick for the Gold Coast Suns at 203k, um, you know, that's bargain basement price really at a, as an emergency. And I feel like for, compared to most other players at that price, he's he's more likely to play than some of the other options there. Um, you know, a friend of mine who supports Hawthorne doesn't think he'll necessarily play, but I, uh, I have faith. I have faith. So, um, yeah. That's my back line. So we'll, we'll, we'll gander down at the midfielders here. And this, these are the real money makers. So you, um, Captain McRae, you know, that's a no-brainer because, you know, with Mitchell going down, he's the highest-priced player in the game. And um, if with him scoring double points, it's, ex- it's like actually having an extra player on the field. So uh, no-brainer there. Angus Brayshaw had a massive JLT. He scored like 138 and 140 or something in his two games. And... You know, he has a massive propensity to find the ball. Um, he, he can kind of butcher it a little bit. I think he's really, really good for his age. Uh, I do I do actually really, really like him. And for, he's better than most 22-year-old mids. But um, uh, if, if he can tidy up his foot skills um, and ha- maybe have a bit more consistent balance between contested possessions and uncontested, I think he could be actually one of the very best players in the game. Um, but either way, from a fantasy perspective, he's, you know, he's going to score big this year, I reckon. It's very consistent. Um, same deal with Matt Crouch there, 761. Uh, I think he had a massive game in one of the JLTs, scored 139 and then 100 and something in the next game. So, um, yeah, I think even at 761, I feel like he could actually prove to be even more valuable than that if he has a good run um, with injury. Because he's just a consistent ball winner. Yeah, even when Adelaide's losing, I feel like he wins the ball a lot. So, um, Brad, Car- sorry, Brad Crouch coming off a groin injury last year at 524k. I feel like that's really good value. Um, normally, 500k odd players aren't really pushing the numbers that he has been in. Well, in JLT, he scored 118 and 114. Um, I feel like he's a bit of a must-have, to be honest, because uh, you know, like I said, most mid-priced. I got upper mid price players don't have the potential he does, so I've uh, shuffled things around to get him into my team. Liberatore, another player just like Crouch, who's missed the year with an ACL, um, 392k. I, I mean, the year before that, he was pretty inconsistent as well. So this this one is risky, but for that value, I feel like that he could depreciate by about 200. Sorry, appreciate by 200 or 300k this year. Um, Scored 102 and 69 in JLT, so um, not super consistent in that respect, but um, I think most people are going with him just for the value he represents. The next one is my first real, like, iffy one. Just I feel like people might be sleeping on James Cousins. Um, not literally, of course. He's sorry, 329K. Um, with Mitchell out of the midfield, I feel like there's going to be a heavier burden on him, or more opportunity, you might say. I've, I've moved Rockliffe out of my team. I've, yeah, this one was real real dicey and I really don't want it to burn me, but I've been talking about Rockliffe all preseason and I think he's going to be a huge player and I really want to get him to my side before long, but um, James Cousins, 111 and 81 so far in JLT at 329K. That could be ridiculous value. Um, and as you'll see later, I was able to upgrade someone else by getting rid of Rockliffe, but... Yeah, that one, I reckon, could prove to be really good value. Um, and the last two midfielders are Sam Walsh and Zach Butters. Um, kind of no-brainers. I think everyone's got to get them in as their rookie mids, um, 270 and 248K. Both of these guys have quite a high propensity to score high despite their age, which is more you can say more than you can say for some of the other 18-year-old options. Um, well, Zach Butters scored... 93 in one game and uh, f- had three goals in the other and then Walsh had like 28 and 23 disposals in his games. I can't remember what the points they scored, but, um, you know, I feel like no-brainers uh, as though for those two. 
Um, and then on my bench, I've got Bailey Scott. What did he score? I'm just looking it up. 84 and 62, this JLT. So um, for 174K, if he's putting up those numbers already, even if he doesn't play round one, he's probably got the potential to be in in the first couple of rounds. Um, quite impressive, too, because he wasn't an early draft pick from memory. I think he was like a Gold Coast Academy player, but... Um, yeah, he's impressed. I think I think he's a chance to play for round one. You, know, you never really know until the team's announced, but um, yeah, I'm happy with that one. And then you got Willem Drury here, um, 170k and confirmed to debut round one. That's fairly. That's probably all I really needed to be honest. It's kind of juggling who to put in that emergency spot, but um, he's he's a pretty good inside mid prospect. I don't really remember. Uh, I mean, I remember him when he was drafted. I haven't followed him since. Um, quite liked him as a player, so hopefully he does well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, as I said, if he's playing around one, it kind of justifies him as an emergency to begin with. So, all right, moving on. You've got the Rucks, and I've gone big here, boys. Um, yeah, I originally didn't have this this combo um, at first, but taking out Rockliffe, um, downgrading him to James Cousins, I was able to upgrade McAvoy to Max Gorn and... Look, I'm pretty happy with that decision. Grundy and Gorn are so so consistent. Um, you know, Gorn didn't have too many days where he missed 100 points. So, yeah, I don't know. See what you guys think about that one. But um, I feel like there's a guaranteed 220, 240 points each week if I have these two. Um, yeah, we'll see about that one. Zach Clark, somebody criticised me for having someone 270K on the bench, but... I actually feel like he could appreciate and be a bit of a cash cow at that price. Um, and he's a good emergency as well. Because I, um, no, what did he score? Over 101 of the JLT games, or very close to it. So um, if he's doing that on the bench, uh, he could appreciate pretty quickly for me. Uh, Darcy Ford, I don't know a whole heap about. I'm not going to lie to you. He's pretty sure he's mature age ruck from South Australia. 170K and a chance to play early. And yeah, that's all, that's all you really need. I don't really think there's any other basement price rucks going um that are better sort of prospects in that sense so um yeah that's that's my rucks moving down uh this e well these are my premium forwards um i mean these guys kind of all picked themselves devon smith was amazing last year oh he would have averaged over well over 100 i can't remember exactly what but um led the league in tackles such a consistent player patty dangerfield of course as a forward you've you've got to pick him um, I don't really need to tell anyone how good Dangerfield is, and Heaney as well is a very good um, well, fantasy player, really. As I said, I don't really need to explain those ones. Um, I've gone for the balance of three premium players and then three cheaper options. And this is where, again, I'm probably a little bit light on. I've picked Connor Rosie at 262k. I was, I was iffy about it. I haven't really had a good fun time picking my forwards so far. Um, 262k. What's he? What do you get in? Uh, he got 49 and 38. So nothing real special. Um, yeah. Look, I'm I'm not really stoked with that one. But because he's a guaranteed round one player, um, it's it's just I guess where my hesitation comes in is he's a sort of a medium forward, um, and those players can sort of go missing a bit, which probably makes it hard to pick these cheap forward options. But um, you know, even if he's not necessarily playing badly, if the ball's not coming to him on a platter, you know, it's hard to see him scoring too highly. Um, but nonetheless, you know, if he's playing round one, that's enough for me to begin with. And it's kind of the same deal with Jack Petricelli here. Um, he's never going to be a good fantasy player, but at 170K, and again, you know, I'm, as an Eagles fan, I'm pretty confident he's going to play round one with no Crips, or even, even if Crips makes it, um, Petricelli's a good chance to play. Uh, what did he score in JLT? He did pretty well, 39 and 71. So um, if you take the midpoint of that, what's that, like 55? If you're scoring 55 a week to begin with at 170K, um, you know, no complaints from me there. But I'd imagine he won't play more than a few rounds in the Eagles team. Um, just as an Eagles fan, that's that's my opinion. When Cripps and Kennedy come back, we'll have some options there. So, um, But, yep, yeah, good round one option. And then Matthew Parker, mature age player for St Kilda you know it's just kind of the same reasoning because he's such a cheap player I've picked him and uh, I think he he turned some heads in his uh, JLT performances so uh, I think he'll play early for the Saints Uh, and if that one doesn't work out 
Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I might still move him off onto my bench depending on how the teams are announced. So, um, especially when you got someone like Noah Bolter on my bench here, he's 170k. Uh, what he scored 98 and 43 this JLT. So that's really good for a second year key position player to be putting up scores like 98. That's huge, and he's guaranteed playing tomorrow night. As I record this, I'm recording this Wednesday night. Um, you know, that's a no-brainer. I'm probably, look, I'm probably going to move him to park a spot there, see how we go. But, um, yeah, pretty happy with that one. I feel like everyone should have him in their team to start. Uh, and then you've got Stasovic there. Only played one JLT game, uh, scored 46. I'm kind of picking him just because I liked him more than the other baseline options there. Um, I, I mean, I, I think he's just a really talented player, sort of like a... Sort of like a forward version of Elliot Yo here, yeah, funnily enough. Um, I feel like in terms of their characteristics and their, um, yeah, their their best attributes, they're kind of similar. He's really strong overhead, um, potential to play in the midfield. Um, I can see the Lions persevering with him a bit just because of that. They, they bolted in his draft year. They took him like top 20, and I think he was projected to go in the top 30, oh, yeah, 35, if that. Um so, yeah, that's kind of my basis. I feel like he could accrue a bit of value and appreciate um, in value, rather. Um, just to give me a bit of, like, that cash cow effect, you know what I'm saying? Cool. All right, guys. Well, that's well, that's pretty much my whole team. Um, look, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm probably going to change it again by the time round one starts. But, um, well, it's been really fun having you on this journey, on this uh, this first attempt at screen recording. So um, let me know what you think of my team in the comments. Um, let's keep the comments constructive. Look, I, I have no dramas with people telling me the team's shit. Um, you just don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> um, or, you know what, you, you can be a dick. I don't care. Just at least say why you think it's, it's bullshit. Because sometimes when people comment, they just say, you know, you're wrong. And they just, you know just leave the comment there and it's I don't even respond to comments like that because it's just there's no point but I welcome the criticism um and all the feedback and I hope to see you guys within our league so um yeah if you're on on board with fantasy this league this year rather um get around the true footy official league and we'll see you on the field not really um, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe we've had so much growth lately and um, really enjoying this this sort of ride as it's going. Um, the channel's getting fairly big now and um, really appreciate all the support. We have some really, really good uh, people following and you know writing nice comments, which we appreciate. Um, but at the end of the day, we just want to make good content. So if you want to jump on board and uh, yeah, see where it goes. Also, if you're interested in joining our Discord community, I'm going to leave another link in the description. Um, no trolls, please. Like We, we do have pretty strong... Um, we have a lot of moderators, pretty strict rules in terms of, you know, saying dumb shit. Just just be a good bloke. That's, that's all we're asking. That's all we're asking. Cool, guys. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.